In this video, we have a very special guest with us, with us today, Mr. Ron Burner. We're talking all about Magic Keys. We're talking about Tiana's Bayou Adventure. We're talking about, you know, Disneyland Forward. A ton of topics today with Mr. Ron Burner. And of course, I also have the Italiano with us today on this episode of OG55. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. We have a very great, a very stacked show today, actually, and we uh, are joined by a very special guest, Mr. Ron Burner. He's been on the show before, but it's been quite a while. Ron, it's great to have you back, sir. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, if you could let everybody at home know where they can uh, find you on social media and all that good stuff. I am at fake Ron Burner, Ron with two N's, fake Ron Burner, uh, Twitter, that's Twitter, that, um, and Instagram is probably Ronnie Burr. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be linking his socials it's down below. So you can, yeah, everyone can just kind of click on him and, and, and follow. Show, show Ron some love. He's got a lot of great insight on Disney mm -hmm. stuff, but even just like uh, you're into sport, uh, a lot of sports uh, um, stuff as well, which if you're into sports, definitely follow, follow Ron. But Ron, again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And George the Italiano, if you can let everybody home know where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You can also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you'll find me here on my home base at Orange Grove, 55 with Citrus Corner, with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. See, Ron, he's got his whole little stick going, like the the, the lines, the whole thing, you know. I, I'm not as fancy as George. <laughs> That's a lot to memorize. <laughs> it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in, man. Let's talk about let's talk about Tiana's. And uh, Ron, it's been a long time since we had you on. Uh, many moons ago, way before Tiana's. Um, so this is Florida's version. Obviously, you know, it's going to be a little different here in California, but not too different uh the mountain i'm assuming will be very similar what are your overall thoughts i mean about this retheme about about how it's looking so far we're kind of we're kind of getting to the point now where it's like we're going to start seeing some stuff because florida is going to open pretty soon but what are your thoughts overall um i think it's great from this perspective that having a black princess like a, an entire corn like it's just a big big deal and a big step and so i, I think the idea to go this route is, is it works in Disneyland because of obviously New Orleans Square. Uh, I, I just think the idea and 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 expanding on the princesses in in this fashion is is really 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 a big deal uh, and it's in such a good way. My thoughts on the attraction itself is, I it, I, I probably am a little more tempered than the hype around it simply because as you mentioned it's a retheme and i tend to not get to like i i look forward to it and i'm i'm stoked to see what they do with it at the same time i'm just kind of like i i know they're they're just dressing it up in a way and they're bringing some new adventure some new color in terms of the ride the attraction visually what it's going to look like so that so the whole aesthetics of the park itself that's going to be a big big deal that i'm looking forward to and even more so than the attraction is the the land right yeah critter, critter country like i'm married to the fact that i've said long ago forever that they're not going to change critter country and um the the land itself and, and and combine it to new orleans square so the whole thing is really fascinating yeah, and, and they kind of like, you know, they kind of confirmed, actually, I can pull it up right now, actually, I was going to discuss it anyway, so it might be a good idea to kind of bring it up. But like with these with these shops, let me go ahead and bring this up real quick. Um, we have the Critter Club, which is actually the, the former, you know, Pooh's Corner, you know. So it seems like they're sort of like trying to kind of do this like transition where you have like, okay, so it's Critter Club, but it's like the critters from Tiana's, uh, you know, from the Princess and the Frog. So it's like this kind of blending of like, okay, that franchise, Princess and the Frog, along with the animals, which sort of tie into the Critter Country theme. So kind of interesting how they kind of marry that together, you know? I'm, I'm kind of digging that a little bit, actually. 
You know, what, yeah. what, what, what are your thoughts on that, George? Yeah, I, I think it's more so to the fact of that. Yeah. A lot of people are kind of looking at it in, uh, how do I put this <laughs> like in a negative aspect form where I think that they're just kind of just missing the point of just, um, sit back like, and let Disney kind of do it, their thing that they've been doing for over a hundred years, you know? And it's yeah. like, just wait till like the product is finished and like, yeah, see it in its entirety, you know? And I think w right now we're kind of getting like these bits and pieces of the puzzle, you know, and we, we right. haven't seen the full picture of it. And so far, I think aesthetically it looks great. I'm, I'm yeah. very optimistic to see of, uh, what the interior of this attraction uh, looks like after, because Splash Mountain was such an iconic attraction, and we we've been on it so many times, multiple times throughout the year. So we kind of know the ins and outs of what it is. So when we get back into that, it's like, what is it going to be transformed into? And that's the uh, that's that's the big the big mystery. Yeah, and, and and that's the thing. And this is this is a very like charged topic because there's a lot of like um, extremes, you know, in, in the in the Disney Twitter space, so to speak, right? Or the community, right? And it's like my 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 expectations going into this is basically Frozen Ever After in that big building. It's going to be that kind of level of attraction, you know. It's going to be very very good. I think I love Frozen Ever After at Epcot, um, but it'll be obviously a different franchise. It'll be Tiana, but it'll be that level of quality, which I think is high. Um, there's going to be things about this attraction that are going to that are going to be superior to that of Splash Mountain, and there will be things of this attraction that I think will probably fall shorter. Um, you know, now here's the thing. One of the worries I had actually was the music. You know, I was worried like, can they top? Splash Mountains music because that's very hard. That's a that's a tough. Those are tough shoes to fill. I mean, that's a that's a catchy kind of earworm, you know. Uh, the zippity doo dah. Can they top that? We've heard recently in the press release that they're actually going to be utilizing a lot of the songs from the movie, like Dig a Little Deeper and things like that. I think that's a good decision. I think that was kind of a little bit of a of a reversal from the from a couple of years ago when they were saying that it was going to be all original songs. Original songs are great, but I think you do want to kind of sprinkle and pepper in some of those, you know, those, um, those, those songs from the movie. And I think they heard the complaints. What, what are your thoughts on that, Ron, in terms of the music and everything? You, you think that they can, they can stick the landing with this or is it, is it kind of, <laughs> is it big shoes to fill? That's that, that was a pretty iconic soundtrack, you know? Right. And, and yeah, so there's a lot there. So so Splash Mountain obviously is like Zippity Doodah won an Oscar. Zippity Doodah is one of the one of Disney's top two greatest songs of all time, and of course, and has been erased from the lexicon, which I'm not a fan of. That's a whole different conversation. Simply because I don't want to I don't want to pretend like things didn't happen. I want to address history and, and correct it. Right. Um, but that's a whole different conversation. But the, to your question specifically with the sound. And, and the music that they're going to use. So it's, it, it is interesting because the ride takes place after the film, right? So you definitely want that legacy, quote unquote, legacy music that everybody knows and everybody loves, especially the big fans of the, of the movie. But since it's after the fact, you feel like they need to like have something new. So incorporating both makes sense from that perspective. If anybody even thinks about it that much, but from a creative mind, I would say it makes sense to have something that they're going to uh, recognize, but then also go into into new stuff. As far as the attraction that like you mentioned with Splash, I also would say, and and George mentioned, like the differences that I'm about the ride itself that I'm most intrigued by. And there's probably going to be more music because there's more from my understanding anyway correct me if i'm wrong but there's going to be more scenes inside so more scenes inside invites more music and more different songs that they can actually you know utilize and and combine or i don't know it'll be fascinating to see what they do and then the last point is that you mentioned that some things will be better and some things not as great um nostalgia is always going to win especially with splash um but the animatronics of of tiana is like like new and improved disney animatronics so that's yeah. really really cool and it's not it's a it's a nice touch that they did like you know what i'm saying like right. they're gonna retheme a ride come you know guns a blazing and 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 blow us away with an animatronic yeah, no, I, and, I'm, I'm looking for that. Go ahead, George. Really? I, yeah, I was just going to kind of go off of that. And we were all kind of wondering 
what direction Disney was going to go with the audio animatronics, especially for the the uh, the human figures, because it's like, yeah. are we going to get the the Epcot? uh frozen uh <laughs> led faces or are we going to get right. the uh the uh tokyo japan uh enchanted tale beauty and the beast bell um and uh hong kong is it is it hong kong hong kong uh frozen right. where it's like just the audience which i'm so glad that's the route disney went um i yeah. think as as i said on previous shows before i feel like the like the LED faces fit well with the dwarfs in uh, the Seven Dwarfs Mind Train because they have that very uh, quirky, zany characteristics to them. And Cartoony. Because, Good yeah, call. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And and because it's also in a mine, you know, it's much darker in there. So you need right. something to kind of give their faces a little bit of light so it fits well. Plus but, it's whimsy. Exactly. Right. Yeah. But when you get characters that are more human like and more human quality especially like the frozen characters in epcot it's not a not a pretty sight so i'm thinking you know <laughs> how are they going to do this with uh with the princess and the frog characters but i'm so glad that they went th the route that they did yeah and, and you bring up a great point george where it's like you know the the projection faces work for the dwarves but maybe not so much for other characters and i think a lot of times fans kind of get into this thing where it's like a z like a like a zero sum game either something is is good or it's totally terrible. And I think there is that gray area, right? Where it's like, hey, you know what? Screens are not always bad. Sometimes you can utilize screens in creative ways, right? Like I think that the Alice in Wonderland, when they redid that, when they kind of renovated and reimagined that attraction at Disneyland a few years back, they incorporated a lot of projections and screens and what have you into the physical sets. And I think they did it in a beautiful way. So it's like, I think you can do this stuff where it's like, there's there's an appropriate sort of um, way to do it, and I don't think that any medium is necessarily like a bad medium, right? So screens in and of themselves isn't bad. Now you don't want to overuse it. You want to know when to use it, when not to use it, and that's where this kind of like this creative intelligence kind of comes in. But just when when fans kind of be like, oh, you know, they shouldn't do screens. It's like, well, no, they should use every tool in their toolbox for these attractions, and and you have all this technology now that Walt Disney would go nuts for if he had it in his day. Mm -hmm. Utilize it, you know, but you have to be creative in how you utilize it. You don't want to just get lazy and just throw a screen up there. You want to be able to incorporate the stuff in creative ways. You so know? what you're saying is they have to dig a little deeper? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. They got to dig a little deeper. Go, go inside a little bit and dig a little deeper. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So it, it'll be interesting. Now, um, Ron, I want to ask you too, because, okay, we lost we lost the, the giant um, – uh, tree stump, the Chickapin Hill tree stump, right? And then that, that was very much a, a you know, uh, what's it called? Kind of like a skyline icon, so to speak, for for like Disneyland and like Magic Kingdom and what have you. What are your thoughts on that? Because we were supposed to get the big boat, right, on the concept yeah. art. We didn't get that. I heard the reason why they didn't do that was because they would have to basically rebuild the whole mountain because it wouldn't be able to maintain that weight and it just wasn't in the cards, you know? But, um, what are your thoughts on, on kind of losing that kind of skyline? And it, it's more a little bit more of a of a subtle sort of um, mountain now. <laughs> what are your yeah. thoughts on that? Well, I think that's why they did the – they tried to fix, like, compensate, I guess, for lack of a better term, for that by using the – what? Are, I don't even know what they're calling it, like a salt dome or something like that. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, I might be wrong on the term, but salt something. And – from what I've seen, it's just little, it's like little flowers. Like it's just, it's just like colorful thing. So it's going to be different, but I feel like it's like, you know, when somebody, you know, very, very well, that like the, take your hair, orange grove, take your hair, say all of a sudden you come in and it's, it's blonde. <laughs> like, like it would be and your, and your glasses are now white. It would be, it would be a, such a crazy departure that it would take <laughs> some getting used to. But then after a, getting used to it a little bit, all of a sudden it just, you just completely accept it and say, that looks totally awesome. That looks great. So I kind of feel like, I mean, look at, look at Galaxy's Edge. Look at, obviously it's a completely net new thing and we wanted it. So we're, we love it no matter what it was going to be. And rather than changing something, um, there's probably examples of changing something that I can't think of off the top of my head. But the, I, the point being, that the, it'll change we won't like it 
at first because we're so in love with Splash. Splash is so right. beloved. And then I do think we're going to get used to it. But I would ask that same question and maybe even further it with it's off topic, but like Haunted Mansion is they're changing that so much. And, and that seems scarier than heck to me from the standpoint that Haunted Mansion is as flawless as they get. And then they're, right. I mean, the queue is awful for sure. But the point is, that's going to be just as dry. Like that whole end of the park is going to be feel completely new to us. Right. It's going to be wild. It's wild. Yeah. The fact that they're digging up the haunted mansion stuff, that's pretty ballsy. That's pretty ballsy, you know, because you're touching like kind of like sacred ground. Right. And the fans are like, oh my God, you know? Yeah. Hopefully they stick the landing with that. Now I am, I am, I am cautiously optimistic with the haunted stuff because so far the, 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 the little projects have done in New Orleans square, like even like the 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 club 33 renovations like years ago with kim irvine and like um even like Tiana's palace uh, you know recently and stuff I, I think it's been done very well and the pelicans landing as well um so oh, they have a good track record over there but it's yeah you're right it's like it's it's hard to watch it's like this but is it's uh, also so welcoming right it's like the queue is horrible and then the exit it can be so much improved and then the, the concept art for the exit is is great fantastic and the queue we all know is is terrible so it's it's welcomed on one hand on the other hand is completely blocked off and there's backhoes in there and like everything we've known before is completely peeled it's just it's just it feels weird because it's such it's one of the most visually appealing if not the most visual visually appealing place in the entire park so it's it is weird <laughs> it's it's bizarre it's absolutely bizarre and they just redid the queue with all that fake grass like about a year ago and just to rip it all up again and it's just like whoa what's going on here you know it, it's absolutely crazy now i want it before we move on to our next topic i wanted to i wanted to ask you guys okay so we have the new shop this this was the briar patch before now it's going to be raised berets <laughs> Raise berets. Now, George and I, we, we we did a video recently um, talking about this. Ron, I really want to get your perspective on this. Ray is because this is a sequel attraction. What we talked about. Ray is obviously not a, not a, not with us anymore. Like at, you know, in this form, like how like does this does this kind of signal that maybe when Bruce Vaughn came back, like maybe there's changes to the attraction. Like maybe they're gonna sort of incorporate characters from from the movie and maybe the storyline changed a little bit where it's not so sequel heavy or is this kind of just og kind of like you know kind of being irrational because <laughs> of a gift shop what do you think ron that is interesting i i don't know i hadn't put thought about it like that i always think that they're my instinct is always that they're trying to grow they want they they want they don't want something to be dead in a year in term dead in terms of it, it, it's lost its life there's no future for it there's nothing going to happen it's something like a relic of the past of somebody that we can't even remember who ray is or even know who ray is so that is very very interesting the shop itself i think of it was like the easiest transition they could have done like it's the easiest thing they could do is just incorporate something so when they incorporate a character specifically like this i always go to just like all the lands and all the things that they're going to do that we'll probably talk about with disneyland forward but to me it's all about franchise it's all about future thinking so are they talking about uh princess and the frog two three like of course, not yet but they will it's got yeah. it's, it's happening I, I i'm promising you you know i i speak with conviction and obviously i don't know anything because i'm a moron but i my gut tells me for certain based on based on box office which is a whole other weird conversation in this day and age but franchise um princess and the frog is is something that's m more likely than not to happen let's put it that way so then when you do stuff like this it be it holds water like down the line yeah no absolutely Especially this tiny little thing i mean you know we're talking about the that is is there a, is there a shop in disneyland smaller than that <laughs> i don't think so i really don't think so and it's interesting how they sort of paid homage to the old briar patch kind of like topography with the signage it, it, it kind of right. holds that same kind of sign you know that's the, the topography interesting stuff interesting choices um i don't know if it if it points to maybe some story changes in the attraction or if they just have heard the complaints and they're like okay we'll give you a consolation prize and we'll put ray in the gift shop i don't know what's going on here but it is kind of interesting you know what what, do, what are your thoughts george yeah I, I said this before uh during the 
during the time when we were talking about this the first time, it it could be one of two things. It could either be where it, it is a hint that, you know, Bruce Vaughn, when he came back, he's starting to shake things up saying, you know what, we got to add these characters back in some way, you know, so you never know, like with uh, Mama Odie's magic, if she happens to like bring them back in some odd shape or form, they might be able to utilize like the... Um, like the, the screens that we were talking about, because I don't think they'll bring them back in audio animatronic form. I really doubt it. Or maybe just uh, audio, you know, maybe we could maybe. just hear them, you know, briefly where it's like, it could be very fast, but it's like, it's so quick that it's like, we know that they're there, but you just, you know, and it makes us feel better at the end of the day, you know, that, you know, <laughs> that Ray is there, you know, what have you, or it could just be, you know, just the, to, to pay tribute to the original film by Tiana kind of honoring her friend by, you know, having a shop named after him. But I, I do agree with Ron where I do feel like this isn't the, the last stopping point when it comes to Tiana's story. You know, you, there there's talks that, you know, they were doing a, um, a show for Disney plus called Tiana. Right. Um, it, it may be, very well be like that the continuation story where it ties into the attraction they may be waiting to see the general response of the fans of how this ride is taken you know to kind of move forward with the project right. um and also it may even go to the route of moana where it starts out as a a show and it's like you know what this is too good and the the ride is very popular let's turn this into a full length animated feature and it become somewhat princess and the frog too or they just right. may title it as tiana yeah we'll see it's interesting and prequels and prequel stories for all these ancillary not ancillary but secondary characters like disney plus as you mentioned i mean that's that's a really good call yeah no 100 100 percent. and real quick i want to touch upon this i don't know how much it matters didn't he release this the other day all the little critters in the attraction and they all got names we got we got ba balia rufus apollo Bo, um uh, gritty just you know I will, I will say this really quick if, <laughs> if nothing else comes out of this attraction as far as like adding content to disney plus or something i can guarantee you that these six will have their own show if oh, nothing that's else that's bold george that's bold yeah we'll see you on <laughs> you know, well my first my first thought was okay it's all about merch it's like okay plushes we're gonna give them a story so we can sell plushes so we can sell shirts so we can sell whatever um but uh, but yeah certainly back to the franchise thing right when when it makes money and when people love it they're gonna go to town on it whether it's a box office film or now the luxury of disney plus where they can do all of every like you just said every single one of these guys can have a priest uh the the prequel and they get into where they are like and tie it all together they how they met each other is just a whole it's just endless it's like, endless and, and, and that's why when i first saw this I'm like okay these are cute characters and then and then disney released their backstories i'm like whoa okay this is a lot of backstory for a character that you're gonna probably pass by in in 30 seconds on uh, in a log you know so maybe you guys are right maybe you gentlemen are right where it's like maybe there's more to this maybe they have like disney plus <laughs> <laughs> like you know you know um aspirations with these characters or something because this is a lot of backstory for something that you're likely going to just pass by you know fairly fast you know so i don't know i, agree. I, I, I was surprised yeah i think that this type of stuff real quick i just wanted to say like these type of stuff is um like we look at it in the in the in the vacuum of of such a short term situation, but this attraction is going to be going for th like thirty years, fifty years. Well, I say thirty years, but I'm just saying look thirty years down the road, and then now these like entire generations come through knowing what they are, and by that point there are the shows and the and the merchandise and the cartoons, Saturday morning cartoons, or however they're going to do it. Right. But it is always interesting. Like you ha almost have to start somewhere, which is kind of awkward and weird and makes no sense to us. Like it, right now in the moment but big picture wise wouldn't would, wouldn't we be questioning them more maybe this is just my brain but i would be questioning them more if they just had characters that were in there and we're going through and we're like we don't who is that <laughs> who, who is that exactly exactly because disney has a history of doing this right even toontown um ron i think i think you and i are about the same age actually i'm um, pretty close probably but like do you remember when toontown opened they had this whole backstory about how toontown was always there 
Right. <laughs> and it was like Walt's thing. He built it for Mickey and all his friends. And they're opening it to the public, you know, that whole little backstory. And, uh, you know, and they've always kind of done this thing, you know, and now not only can they do that same backstory, but now they can really monetize it and really lean into that synergy flywheel, you know, as JPEG called it. We're like, OK, now we can do the backstory and now we can take these characters with that backstory and we can we can throw them on Disney Plus. We can make a maybe like a like a Disney Junior type of show with these characters or something like that. So it's interesting. Yeah, because if, no, if nothing happens, like if nothing like manifests and 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 becomes a bigger story, then it's just like the you know, C. Like it's like those those characters that are like the names that are in the Matterhorn and the names are in these random places. It's like this underworld that knows who all these C characters SEA, I should say. It's not C <laughs> SEA <laughs> characters. Um, it's kind of like that where they're just going to give them a backstory and then see what happens where it's there. If they can, if, when, if, and when the time comes to utilize it, but if nothing really manifests or nothing really comes of it, then we could just, they're always just kind of, they're in some wake. Exactly. Disney Disney Plus presents Tiana's Critter Tales inspired by the Princess and the Frog. There you go. <laughs> well done, sir. Well Perfect. done. Exactly. Perfect. Disney hire this man. Hire this man. <laughs> okay. So next topic, Magic Keys. This is kind of interesting because this is from uh, Nick Dean 707 Disneyland is now advertising Magic Key sales at park entrances. Probably the first time since the Magic Key program launched that keys have been available for three weeks or more, as I can remember. So this is kind of interesting. Like usually they do this whole like, you know, as Christy McCarthy, you know, former CFO of the Walt Disney Company would say, we can push and pull these levers. Exactly. Usually they, they, they kind of do this kind of like, you know, they, they put the Magic Key sales out there. They sell out like in 10 minutes, you know, people wait like nine hours in the queue and then they're done, you know, but like now no, in like, this case, their levers jammed. Yeah, it's jammed. They can't, <laughs> they can't unlever the lever. You know what I'm saying? Like, so like, what, like uh, Ron, I'll start with you. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, it, are they having trouble kind of getting people to get on board with the magic keys? If so, is this indicative of a bigger problem? Like what's going on with this? Yeah. So that would make sense. So if you're looking at it from inventory standpoint right if you're looking for at it from an inventory standpoint it would imply that they're having trouble selling them i'm just not willing to go there they might not be selling like the hot cakes that they historically have that said i just i'm not buying it i feel i've all i've always maintained that and I'm I've, and I'm wrong about this because I said it's going to be the Wild West. They're 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 putting on this facade about saying that we that there's reservations and only so many people can get in. And I have forever and uh, on previous shows um, said I've always said it's still the Wild West. They're going to let everybody in. They're just saying this because it's good marketing. It makes sense and all of those things. Or they're and not or but and they're playing the game of they're trying to test because now that they have reservations now that they they're seeing the numbers and the, the switching between parks they're actually seeing the data and the numbers and seeing where people are and what they're doing so they can kind of be smarter about i know it obviously helps with with uh, the staff but it also with the cast members that they need to have and, and the hours that they work but it also makes sense on how many people that they're allowing in to keep it so people can flow so people can buy more merchandise instead of going into a cramped store so all that makes sense and it seems like i've been wrong because the parks haven't been quite as packed as years past um but when it boils down to the magic key in my opinion follow the money always so to me they're keeping it open and i think the combination of them having the 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 numbers indicating who's coming and who's going that they they're seeing that they can continue to allow people to purchase these and the reservations aren't being overwhelmed i can't tell you the last time i've even looked to get a reservation that i haven't been able to get one that is that is true the other thing is the money it when do they want the money to hit the books so what is going on right now Diz, you know disney um shareholders and stock price has flourished like crazy so now we're in the second quarter and that they've they're keeping this thing open the entire time so to me i'm not saying this is right or wrong at all but anytime they're allowing a revenue stream to remain open is because they strategically want the money to hit the books at that time that might not be true, but that's how I always look at it. 
That's smart, Ron. That's smart because, and, and not only it, are they are we second quarter, but now we're going into this very contentious annual shareholder exactly. meeting. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And a lot we've seen so many announcements leading up to this thing on April 3rd. You know, it's like they're they're pulling out all the stops. You know, they want to make sure Pelt and Verzula don't get on that board. So you're right. Maybe this is that's maybe the move with, for for the for the proxy battle or what have you. Make sure we can pump these numbers up. You know what I'm saying? We have something to brag about on April 3rd. Interesting theory. I never considered that. What do you think, George? Yeah, when I when I heard this news, I I, I kind of had where it's one of two scenarios and it's one is like they are i don't want to use the term hurting because obviously looking at the stock price disney isn't hurting right now (laughs) um but as far as for the number of magic keys that are being sold it may not be to what disney thought it was going to be once they were to go back online and they're kind of maybe like trying to push that train like uh, further along the the tracks by you know showcasing hey you know we still have magic keys available or they could just be using this as a great marketing tool to just say you know what we hit our quota but you know what we're not going to remove um the, the those levers a little bit and we're just going to kind of just showcase it and say hey you know if you want to upgrade your ticket we have magic keys, you know, they're, they're still here to stay and it could be something as simple as that. And as you both had mentioned, it's like, we have, uh, we're going into the second, well, we're, we're into the second quarter, excuse me. Um, we have the, the shareholders meeting on the third and also too, we have that, uh, that second half for meeting for the Disneyland forward coming up April 16th. So wow. a lot of like eyes are on, anaheim right now so disney might want to try to keep everything open right now as is because i think we all are kind of in agreement disneyland forward is moving forward no pun intended so i mean what better way than to and as ron was saying you know they they want to see those numbers you know they want it in the book so it's like it could encourage people to buy magic keys once disneyland forward is greenlit that's a great point too, George, where it's like, you know, they're trying to kind of convince the board, you know, to, to kind of get that final approval for Disneyland forward. Like, look, how, like, you know, if you keep these magic key sales open, you can kind of use that as bragging rights, right? Like, look at, look at what we're bringing into the resort. Look what, you know, so that's a factor too. That's interesting. Very, very interesting. Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. Oh, no, not at all. I, I, I totally agree. And I think it, I, I the the idea that this, the, the passes have typically, historically speaking, sold out and they stopped selling them. Like the lowest pass sold out immediately, like the same day this year. Wow. But they sent, but they let the, of course, their premium passes, the more expensive passes, they didn't okay. shut those down, did they? So, so are you, are, is Disney expecting me to believe? Again, this is just simply the way my brain works and, and my opinion. I'm not saying it's right at all. But is Disney expecting me to believe that the lowest level pass sold out the same day, but now has been going on four weeks and the other passes aren't selling out? And if that's true, then to George's point, Disney is massively hurting because they have never not sold out within a day or two ever. So imagine the numbers, how minimal are selling if it's taken four weeks and they're not sold out. That's why I don't buy it. That, that Historically, it that just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense, yeah. especially since like and, and George, um, you know firsthand with D twenty three Expo or uh, fan event. Yes, <laughs> we'll, we'll, get into, yeah. we'll, get, we'll, we'll get into that on another video. But like the the demand seems to be there, obviously, because like the, the X, yeah. yeah, this fan event's like crazy. I mean, it's 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 there's crazy demand for it. I mean, you know, I, I will just say because I'll save all that for our video, but I'll just give a little teaser of it when I was trying to get tickets i swear i swear to you ron it was like as soon as i got in there it was like the freaking hunger games like it it was like everyone was for themselves like people were just nabbing seats like crazy like it was actually live it was in real time that you actually were looking at the, the the honda center map and you're watching these seats disappear and you're trying to grab them and everyone's grabbing the same seats at the same time it was like it oh was so God. chaotic you can watch the people taking your seat right george literally yes i did i literally watched it like taken from me out of my car 
<laughs> Ron, are you are you going to the expo this year? Or no? I'm not going this year. No, I did. I will because I'm massively curious. I did log in because I'm a gold member, and I I just logged in on that day just to see the process. And it took it took several hours or whatever. I mean, I got ten monitors here, so it's on one of them. <laughs> and um, I, I I did get in, and I, I could have bought it, but I didn't because I'm I'm solo. So I don't know. I don't know. It, it's a it's a wonderful event, and I love it. But I, I've been there the last two, and and I'm just like ah, I I love it, but I'm just might as well. I'm not. I I'm just a fan at this point, right? <laughs> <laughs> so so I did I did not do it. But the one last point I wanted to make on on the on the past thing is isn't it interesting that like we just mentioned earlier that half of the park is closed but yet they're selling all the magic key passes like you can't there's some major attractions down including in one entire corner i find that to be such a weird like like juxtaposition it's like the time that we're gonna sell unlimited passes is the time that we're giving you a a third of our product is not existing Oh, that's a great point. And not only is it like a, a like part of the park closed, it's like the centerpiece of Disneyland is that area. I mean, this is like the heartbeat of, of, of Disneyland, in my opinion, is that New Orleans Square area. And you got Haunted Mansion closed, Splash Mountain closed. I mean, that's a huge chunk of oh, why people go to this park. You know, it's, it's not like, you know, you're shutting down like, I don't know, like, um, something more a little more in, inconsequential like the alien pizza place in tomorrowland or something you know right. what i'm saying it's like this is serious stuff. you know that's it's, still it's, there <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right? exactly <laughs> exactly you know so it, it's wild now let, let's dive into just some disneyland forward because this is this is fascinating so a few weeks ago they approved the first pr the first part of the of the process right so it can move forward no pun intended move forward <laughs> Um, exciting stuff, basically Disneyland Forward, for those of you at home that are not aware, is basically Disney taking its current property. They're not trying to expand out anything. They're just trying to take their current land and rezone it, right? So that first process, um, that first part of the process was approved. Now, what is April 16th, right, George? Correct. Like the second, okay, and then that'll be the final approval. Yes. Or denial. We'll see. You know, uh, Ron, you know, we haven't had you on in a, in a long time. What are your thoughts on this? Like, wh where do you think this is going? You think this is going to get approved? Do you think it'll maybe get approved, but like maybe not everything Disney wants? Right. It'll be a little mixed bag. What do you feel? I like? think approval on some level is, again, follow the money, right? And it, what Disney. And, and it's funny because it's on the heels a lot a lot of this so i read the same stuff so i get the oc register like everybody else and um mice chat i so the main primary like sources of information that really vet things and really put it out there um i read so i read it every time that they come through so my understanding from reading those over the last few months whatever I, all the money is always what i think anyway but the idea that this is on the heels of the pandemic and the pandemic was a very, very good indicator of what Disneyland not being open does to the city of Anaheim. Right. And that is maybe their best selling point. So there's so much meat on the Disneyland forward bone. And I've always been very like they told us from the onset, this is a 30 year thing. So if they're telling you it's 30 years, which means like, okay, don't even think about it. But the traction <laughs> that they've got, ironically, as weird as it sounds, is like the pandemic really fast forward and not to punt it. But the, it seems like it really, really put motion moving forward in this thing. So I am of the belief, I'd love to hear your guys' opinion because there's I could go on forever about so many stuff here. But I'm of the opinion that the city is – especially since it was recommended by the by the committee this, that they recommended to do it and the Disney's approach this time that they're not asking the taxpayers to, to pay for it. Like there's a lot going on here that's in Disney's favor and they're really working towards it and the city knows what Disneyland means to them. So I do think on some level, there's certainly going to be approval. If not full approval, it will be um, significant. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. And you have... Um, a newly elected, pretty, pretty fresh uh, mayor who was a Democrat, you know, and then you just had Governor Gavin Newsom, you know, doing photo ops with Bob Iger in front of the Disneyland Forward <laughs> concept art. Right. It's like you got the top Democrat in the state, you know, Gavin Newsom. 
you know, a, a Democrat mayor, it, there's a lot of political pressure to kind of, I think, to get this thing done. I, I think it will. But, you know, there might be some concessions, though. You know, they might not get everything they want. But yeah, I think I think ultimately it will. George, what are your thoughts? You, you, George is very bullish on this. He says not if, but when. Yes. yes. So I kind of know where you stand, but go ahead and remind me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, yeah, when when this gets approved on April sixteenth, um, I do, uh, I, I do feel that this is in Disney's favor this time around because I feel like for both sides of the spectrum, for Disney and the the city of Anaheim, I felt like Disney during the time when they were introducing the uh, the Eastern Gateway project, they were a little bit um, confrontational. Uh, we'll yeah, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> it was like, it's like, you know, who has the gold makes the rules, so to speak. And it's like, they kind of <laughs> have that, that mentality. It's like, we're Disney and we could do anything and you're going to like it no matter what. Yeah. Kind hey, of hey, 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 I hop, you're going to sink or swim. You know what I'm saying? We make the rules over here. You know what I'm Basically. saying? <laughs> and then the, the city of Anaheim's like, whoa, 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 like hold, hold your horses. And you have like all these, uh, and then you have these uh, like uh, smaller businesses that are like, you know, oh, of course, you know, it's like we would do just fine even if Disneyland was here. It's like, yeah, people are going to drive into the city of Anaheim just to go to a Denny's, just to go to a <laughs> McDonald's. It's like or even to stay at one of the local hotels. Right. People go on to Harbor Boulevard and Catella and Ball Road for the purpose of getting to Disneyland. It's that's just what it is. But I love Disney's approach of how they individualize themselves, so to speak, to kind of bring themselves down off that pedestal by talking to the residents, talking to the businesses, talking to the city multiple times. And this was even mentioned during the, the first half of the, uh, the voting process where they created those little pop-up workshops and, and everything. Right. So I love Disney's approach to it. But then also to Ron's point, I think all these businesses after 2020 kind of woke up and was like, whoa yeah we really need disneyland on our side otherwise our businesses are are sunk well <laughs> not only that the disney is is talking about spending minimum saying well, i think they said 1.9 but the minimum of 1.9 billion dollars that they're going to pump mm -hmm. into it including i don't know what the numbers are but there's a there's numbers out there for what they're going to put into parks what they're going to put into the streets and the traffic lights and mm -hmm. like all of the city elements um that's huge because they're saying that that's the minimum and then it's spread it over 10 years. So it's like all of these incent, all of these things that Disney is doing to make it happen are all things that behoove Anaheim. Mm -hmm. I would say that the one, the one like drawback is, is not having control or like all of a sudden, cause I think it goes to 2064. I could be wrong on that, but I think if, if it's approved, uh, the new, the new deal would go to 2064, the new zoning, the, deal would go to 2064 rather than i think now it's 2034 or 2036 but what happens again the way my brain works is sometimes when you have the leverage like the art of war when you have the leverage which anaheim really does in a roundabout way even though disney brings in the money it, if they agree to this and they're giving disney what they want with all of these things even though it behooves anaheim it also makes anaheim say okay we don't have them by the throat um any long <laughs> by disney the show it's a by, disney by, show by, by the throat <laughs> it's a disney show um so so that's interesting and then the other i think the other thing that really hurts disney is they don't know i mean is this ambiguous ambiguity that's i can't say it uh the ambiguous nature that disney operates in everything that they do yeah. is is it's hard to it's I can understand why it's hard for people to get um to agree to something. It's like, okay, what's the deal? What are you exactly gonna do? And you're not gonna tell us, but you want us to give you all of this thing. And of course, the locals with the congestion that it would it would bring is is certainly a problem. But I agree, George. I'm I wasn't gonna go that far and act like I know for sure, but I'm with you. I, I <laughs> I feel like Anaheim would be making a tremendous mistake by doing to your point, like they have the gold and they're the king it, it, rather than Disney say, no, we're, we're Anaheim and, and you're Disneyland. We're the city. Right. Right. Exactly. That's a mistake. Yeah. It, it's yeah. a mistake. And especially Disney's, uh, very smart, very, um, 
strategic move of also giving back to the city, you know, for the, the local parks and and the uh, the residential for um, low cost living and what have you. So, I mean, so with the city of Anaheim, with them denying Disney their approvals, they're also denying approvals for the actual city of what they're actually representing. So right. Disney knew to kind of put that in the position. It's like, we'll leave it in your hands. We're offering you this. If you, you give that, you know, give a little, take a little, you know, we'll scratch your back if you scratch ours. So if it's like, you don't take it, that's fine, but nobody's back's getting scratched, you know, and it's, <laughs> and, uh, and the only, and actually to the original question, I do feel like m majority if not all, is going to get approved. The only part that I'm hesitating on that's going to, I think, get a little bit of uh, a little bit of heat of trying for Disney is the request for them to own the um, Magic Way. Magic Way, yeah. That yeah. one I think is going to be a little bit, a little bit of a fight in in yeah. a sense of just trying to go back and forth with that. Yeah, and I think that one is actually voted on later, if I'm not mistaken. I, I think I read that somewhere. That's not going to be part of this April 16th uh, vote, I believe. I, I could I be mistaken. Think on I that. think you're right. I think you're right. The next That's one after that is May something. There's another yeah. one in May. The the one in yeah. May. The one in May. I'm trying to remember. Like the this one coming up is going to solidify. And like definitely like yes or no. If it's yes, it's moving full steam. And I think the May one is like where they have like to 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 sign like the finalized documents and kind of like put everything into into yeah. place. So maybe the May one is where they'll vote on the street. It's possible. It's possible. Now I do think too. Like th this guy, um, I forgot his first name, unfortunately, but his last name was Perez. Gentleman <laughs> from the <laughs> from the last vote that we had a few weeks ago, right? And and this guy, he was cool, man. He was cool. I I, I like the guy, but he was like he, he was gave really, me an he gave me an ulcer. Yeah, <laughs> he was he was really digging though. He was he wanted to know detail, like what are you going to build, you know that kind of stuff. But here's the thing: it's like I think Disney's really keeping it close to the vest, and I think they're keeping it close to the vest for for really one big reason. Because when Disney, see, this is the problem: when, if Disney were to say, "Yeah, you know what? Our ultimate goal here is for a third park in the Toy Story lot," just being hypothetical, right? Once you do that, and once you say, "Yeah, we want to build a Westcott," okay, now I'm wish casting here a little bit, but let's just bear with me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, right? But like. Once you do that, you start to sort of get into the details of what the projects that you want that Disney is going to do. You kind of open yourself up from Disney's perspective of like the city sort of nitpicking those plans. Oh, you want to build Westcott, huh? So where's that big ball going to go? Because I don't know if we want to do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that Disney's purposely sort of keeping the plans, the details, super hush hush until it gets approved. <laughs> then you drop I it off. <laughs> I, I just have to add something to, to, to the record, Ron. I just have to tell you, for as long as I've known this guy over here, like since I've been part of his channel, and and honestly, I've known him for like how many years, years now that it's like we're we're ba we're family, you know. So it's like, but I have to say, since knowing him, he has found ways to integrate any <laughs> i know any but... opportunity imaginable to get westcott over to disneyland come on disney make it happen make it happen i well, know anyway. i i was just gonna say i remember you from so long ago and you've always maintained toy story you're trying to you're trying to shoehorn a third <laughs> gate into to hit the toy story i don't see it but i love that you see it and i love and it's a it's certainly a possibility for sure yeah. i see that yeah i don't know it's a great conversation, though. But I agree, they're going to use it for something. I just don't know it's a third park. Do, do you do you think that it's to? Is it is it the is it the size? Is it the placement? Is it the location? It's a placement. Yeah, placement. Location. location. Like yeah. placement location. To me, the same thing. But yeah, um, I I guess because of Disneyland Forward. So is Disneyland. I guess it's kind of a caveat, right? So if Disneyland Forward is an extension of the existing parks, then you can have the conversation about Toy Story being a third gate. Because because I do think I agree with you on this. A third gate is absolutely happening at Disney at the Disneyland Resort. It absolutely is. I don't know if it's going to be in ten years or fifty years. It's just it, where it's just it, where is it going to be? Just where? And I think. Uh, 
if I had to guess right now and put my put it on record, I absolutely think Disneyland Forward is more likely to be a third gate because and the reason I say that is because all the conversation we were just previously talking about with the city of Anaheim and the zoning thing, right? The zoning situation and the zoning thing is Disneyland wants to make, or sorry, Disney wants to make Disneyland a destination location. The best way to do that is have a third gate. So now you're getting more into the Disneyland world. So in my mind, thinking that Disneyland forward as an extension of existing parks is not the best way to 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 make Disneyland bang as much as a third gate would be in my mind. So now they have these 300 foot hotels that they're able to do. They're able to do all these additional things that make it this total destination location. And, and what better way to pitch to Anaheim than we have a third gate. We're getting closer to Disney World. We're going to come. We're going to conform to all of your rules as a, as a, a applies to the noise we're going to taper the buildings down we're going to do all of these things exactly anaheim as you're asking us to do but what we're going to do for you is we're going to have a third gate we're going to have people filling up all these 300 foot hotels that we're going to build <laughs> and they're going to be coming in and you're going to get all of the ta all the all the the taxes and revenue and all that's going to go into the city and that's where i look at the at toy story as being more of um it's been said a million times by everybody, but more of a, uh, of a, not a downtown Disney, but like a Disney Springs or whatever, you know, something like that, something, I don't know. But again, if, if Disneyland forward becomes an extension of the parks, now all of a sudden, then I would say, oh my God, 100%, it's going to inevitably be Toy Story Park. Oh. Well, well, and it's interesting too, but you have a great point, Ron, because it's like, okay, let's say you, you build a third park over there by the hotel. Right. You kind of you kind of you kind of weave in the park around the hotels over right. there by like Pixar Hotel and Disneyland Hotel. And that's the thing, because if you OK, so psychologically, if you were to expand DCA and you were to expand Disneyland. Yes, those two parks grow and they get bigger, but psychologically with it, with the average person that might not necessarily translate into more hotel stays. Right. Because it's still the same parks so psychologically it's still two parks but if you were to take that same land and add a third park technically it's the same amount of space technically it might even be the same amount of rides but psychologically it's like for the family thinking oh well you know what now there's three parks we gotta stay at a hotel or we got we gotta boost our our stays like instead of two nights we gotta do three nights because there's three parks you know so it's like a psychological mind game a little bit right well disneyland the word disneyland resort might actually make sense if there's a third park over there <laughs> right. like it, i just feel like the pitch in my mind it goes back to the pitch to, to anaheim what's a better pitch we're gonna make disneyland and dca bigger and you can get into both by walking through this other thing and blah 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 or third gate that's the that's the pitch. Third gate. We, we're not taking one inch more of your land. We will we'll talk about buying these roads, these 500 foot roads, couple 500 foot roads. We'll talk about that. But what we will do is we will 100 percent build hotels, fill those hotels because we're going to have a third park. I mean, just like I said, third gate, third park. That's all they have to say. Exactly. I, in my mind. Yeah, no, exactly. It, it would be a huge. It would be a huge boom both both for Disney and the city. So it'd be crazy. Now here's so, the thing too. Oh, go ahead, George. Really quick before you move on. So just the kind of which I definitely can see that. Def yeah. Only one slight counter to that, as to opposed to the area where they're supposedly going to expand the other two parks. I can understand Disneyland. I think Disneyland, whether they expand out Disneyland or not, or they leave it as is Disneyland is jam packed with so much to do already. Right. You know, Disneyland is like the, the, the coup de gras, you know, the, the creme de la creme, the, the cherry on top of, of the resort, obviously. But my concern more so is with DCA where it, it, it has that lackluster of amount of space that Disneyland right. has where I feel like that if you utilize that land for the third gate, which if they do, I'm ecstatic, you know, and it still, it does make sense. But just speaking just for DCA standpoint, sure. it kind of landlocks it to where 
you can now no longer expand DCA for anything. The the park is just as is. Minus yeah. the, the the Hollywood uh, backlot where supposedly that's where uh, Avatar is supposed to go to expand uh, outward to where the the bus loading area is. And, and, and that's why George is the king of the Segway. Because that's exactly <laughs> our last and final topic today, which is Avatar. The Avatar experience, where is it going to go? There's rumored Chris Beatty at IAPA said, hey, it's going in, into DCA. And then he backpedaled and said, no, maybe not, you know. But the, all rumors point to DCA, which is interesting because, look, I, I'm, I've been kind of like, I'm very forgiving with it when it comes to the theming a little bit. Like, okay, I can see how a San Francisco can fit into a California park. I can see how a Route 66 Cars Land can kind of fit into a, a California park. But you tell me you're going to put Pandora from a, literally another planet into a California park. And that's when OG is like, okay, this is a little weird now. How are they going to do this? You know what I'm saying? So the rumor is it's going to go into the Hollywood land area. Where like that, um, well, here, I'll, I'll bring up an image. I'll bring up an image. It, this is actually uh, courtesy of a friend of the channel, uh, Wraith Kelsko. Um, basically, that whole area behind like, you know, Monsters Incorporated and what have you, including Monsters Incorporated actually as well. But like that bus load, all that stuff. So it's about six acres. This is the rumored spot for this kind of mini Pandora. Now, it's about six acres, almost seven acres. The Pandora in Florida, I think, is about 12 or 13. So it's almost exactly half. This is interesting. Ron, if 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 we get like this mini Pandora in DCA off of like the main Hollywood land strip, does that work for you? <laughs> or is it, is it still a little weird having this in, in DCA? I, I don't know. What well, is interesting, I'll say first, the DCA thing that you mentioned, I guess I... My theming issues is more Tomorrowland is all Pixar, but there's a Pixar land in in DCA. Like that that right. bothers me more than anything. And Little Mermaid <laughs> should be the subs. <laughs> like, yes, or, thank you, like, thank like, you. Like anyway, the 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 DCA point that you made, or in terms of California Park, it's interesting. Like I've removed myself from viewing it as a California park so much so that I think that when you we're going to talk about avatar, it's like, where do you possibly put it? And of course you could go to the Hollywood backlot. I'm not buying that for many reasons. Well, not many for a couple. One is Marvel. I don't know what they're going to do. Marvel it feels Marvel E. It also feels like, are they just going to floor those existing studios that they have, which I don't maybe, maybe cause they're not using it for anything, but it's, it's still a quite, a pill to swallow for Disney to say, you know what, we're just going to destroy everything. And so I don't know. But then the other question is, where do you put, where's the possibilities of an avatar land in either park in Disneyland? In my opinion, I don't, again, this is just my thoughts. The only possible place means you're eliminating and there's a lot of logistics that go into it because of the lagoon, but by, by, um, um, great. Uh, Miss what? American Pie. <laughs> <laughs> I, I almost called Autopia Radiator Springs because I couldn't think of it. And then, uh, but that is a good. That's right on cue. But then, but then the Disneyland. So to the California point, the California Park point is, I can, I see, like when George had mentioned, like there's not, there's no space there, which is a great point. There is no space there. But the way Autopia is, you know, kind of in hospice. I would right. say, <laughs> I would say that I think Redwood Creek is in Hoswood, and nobody talks about it. I could just see that being something that goes away, and what, I'm not saying that it's going to. I'm not saying I have an opinion on. It. I'm just saying I, I can very easily see if they wanted to put something in there that they thought was going to boom business. I could see that being an area that they would do it. The back lot is always the biggest mystery of anything Disney ever. So I don't have a problem with Avatar being in DCA because I don't think of it as a California park in the traditional way as it was intended. But boy, oh boy, it just feels weird. Like the transition, like how do you transition to get to 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 get into Avatar from Marvel? Like it just feels weird to be over there to me. It, it's Not weird. Unless you go like the Fox Studios route, like you go under like the Fox Studio marquee and then you go into this Avatar thing. I mean, I, 
I guess that might work. It's kind of weird. Personally, I've been saying for a long time, though, if you're going to do Avatar, I think the spot to put it, like you said, Autopia is in hospice. Okay. It's dead attraction walking at this point. It uses up a lot of acreage. It's outdated. Um, you can take the sub lagoon in Autopia and that motorboat area and put a nice Pandora there. Obviously, you'd have to rework the monorail track, which is going to cost a little money. But at least then it seems like it might work better because it. I think Avatar as a franchise is sort of a beautiful transition from tomorrow to fantasy. It sort of works in both of those lands. So when it's transitioning between those two lands, it kind of works, you know? I mean, yeah. personally, that's where I would put it, but that's the most expensive because now you got to reconfigure the whole monorail spaghetti bowl. And that's a whole other ballgame, you know? And... and and yet that would make most sense because that was somewhat of Disney's intention to remove that that spaghetti bowl anyway because Imagineer right. Scott Trowbridge took to social media and kind of showcased that little area where he was saying, you know, like um, what was what was his Disneyland quote never completed. It's or never something completed like or something like that. And he showed that that area. So obviously Disney has something planned for that area and of course when Iger kind of spilt the beans you know during that the quarterly earnings call about Avatar you know we're all thinking oh that uh, there's the answer right there it's going to be in that and then <laughs> and then Chris Beatty says it's going to be a DCA we're like scratching our heads like what <laughs> like I don't I don't I, I don't get it but to Ron to what you had mentioned about uh the the um the trail I can somewhat understand that because for I mean for me unless you have like young kids and everything it's kind of like a a lost piece of land. M my only thing that stops me every time now unless Disney has other plans um, is when they have like the uh, the Oogie Boogie Bash. They utilize right. that space for the the Villains Grove, and that's always like a hard head like uh, major attraction for you know for people that. But I mean, down the road, I mean, like, how many times can you see the same thing? You know, so Disney's going to want to kind of update. So I could actually see that becoming something. And yeah. they could always kind of revitalize it for Oogie Boogie Bash or whatever they're going to do in the future. Because after so long, people are going to buy these tickets. And it's like, well, Villains Grove is nice, but it's the same thing year after year. Can we get something different? Can we get something new for these prices? Yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, if Disney wants to make something happen, they'll make it happen. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, uh, you know. I mean, it's not it like happen. they can rewrite a whole waterway and, like, configure the whole back end of uh, right. Disneyland for Galaxy's Edge. I mean, who does that? <laughs> no, no, exactly. Exactly, man. It's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, no, if they want to if they want to put it there, they'll put it there, you know, and they'll figure out the boogie bath stuff later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting. This whole thing is very fascinating to me, this whole Disneyland Forward, because it really does change the whole dynamic. And everything. you know what's what I also think all the time, because they don't give us anything, they keep everything close to the vest, but they have such immense teams doing market research and doing all these elaborate things that we, we, they give us so little information. We think they're stupid right. and, yeah. and they're not, they are brilliant in every possible way. And they, they might stumble and they might not, they might, they make mistakes like, you know, any, any company or whatever, but I'm always fascinated like I, I'm fascinated when I think of what do you think they're doing in the creative room when Iger and people are bringing these presentations and tomorrow when they're talking about the parks, like they have such a uh, elaborate plans. Doesn't mean they're going to happen, but they have these pitches of where to put these things and what, and they know in their mind's eye what they're going to do. But I think a lot of that's also contingent on what happens at Disneyland forward. And then if Disneyland forward, like the timeline for Disney, they're the masters of kicking the can down the road and all these announcements mm -hmm. and all these things that they do is buying time. Cause even Disneyland forward, which we didn't talk about at that point, but they're building the biggest parking structure of all time. If it gets approved, they're going to build the biggest parking structure ever, at least in the United States, right? And that means nothing, at least I guess I'm guessing, but I wouldn't think they're going to do anything Disneyland forward until long after that's at least completed. Of course, so, yeah. be, so all these things. So the plans and the ideas of what they want to do with Avatar, with what they want to do with potential new lands in, in, in Disneyland forward, Frozen, I don't know, well, New Park or whatever they're going to do. Right. They know so much and they just laugh at us just saying like, <laughs> oh, yeah. like and, all the rumors. Yeah, and, and you make a really good 
points there, Ron, because yeah, it's like that was always Disney's MO. Like yeah. they their 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 R and D department, their creative blue sky process, they're not looking at stuff to do in two years. They're looking at stuff like 10, 15, 20 years down the road. Right. So I I don't know where like the community kind of got this mentality and I think social media has a big part in it because yeah. social media, like we get everything at our fingertips, which was never the case. And we so have a voice. Exactly. And it's, and now it's like, if we don't get it right there and then it's, I, I call it the Veruca salt syndrome. It's like, <laughs> I want it now, you know? So it's like, but it's like, just because we don't get it now, that doesn't mean Disney isn't working on it. <laughs> Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, I know. It's very much that, George. Like it's and like it, out of sight, out of mind. Didn't happen, right? Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, I cut you off. I apologize. And, and and exactly that to that point, exactly agree with that. And it's the marketing standpoint of it. So look at like even the timeline of like there's attrition, right? So you release something and you release it and all the hype and all the buzz and everybody comes in on that. When that attrition starts to hit, like, okay, there's nothing new exciting. Now we need to hit a new window. That's when the next thing is going to happen. So the, so back to new Orleans square, right? It's in my opinion, a hundred percent by design that haunted mansion is going to open in what August, something like August. Right. I so guess, then, so. so then everybody, especially uh, all of us loyalties, loyalists, we're going to all rush there. We are going to all want to see it. All the people that are coming into town, they're all going to want to see this new Haunted Mansion because Disney's going to promote the heck out of it. It's going to be a big deal. Everybody knows about it. Everybody, you can't get away from understanding that the Haunted Mansion is now going to be new-ish. Um, but that's going to happen. And when that buzz starts to die down a little bit, all of a sudden, guess what? We're promoting the heck out of Tiana's Bayou Adventure is finally opening. And that's just the way <laughs> you do things. Like, you, you don't, you open two big massive things at the same time. It's like, wait a second, we're losing some of our luster, especially when we're on reservations and the same amount of people are going to come no matter what. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Tiana's going to be huge because just for the curiosity factor alone. Right. Agreed. You know, it's going to be everyone in the, and everyone Disney in the did that on purpose. If they showed us every little thing, it's like, okay, then what is going to drive me, especially since I'm not a look, which I'm, as I said, I am, quote unquote, a loyalist, you know, even though I'm an East coaster, I'll fly off. This guy knows me. I'll get on a plane the next day. I'm there. Like, I don't, I don't care. It's oh, like, no, he does <laughs> call me he comes from Pennsylvania. Okay. And he'll call me like, Oh yeah, I'll come out next week. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's awesome. So, so it's like, but for the people that, you know, don't really like have that kind of flexibility that it's like, okay, well, what is going to entice them to come out and experience this? And it's like, right. well, it's, it's knowing the unknown. It's like, it's not knowing is like with the, and I always go back to, and this is going to really bring out the nerd in me, but it, it kind of brings back to me of Steven Spielberg with Jaws of how he had to oh. utilize that where it's like, it's not, it's not seeing the shark. It's like you're seeing through the eyes of the shark of his of his <laughs> point of view, but it's not seeing him is what I think made that film so successful. Million percent agree. I mean, yeah. he, he, OG said at the top, I, I talk sport on Twitter. I talk sports um, and I talk Disney. The, the third thing I talk is film. And I could not agree more about that. There, it's the same with Halloween, 1978, the greatest horror film yes. ever. Same exact thing. It's because it's the anticipation. It's the Hitchcock thing. It's the right. it's the anticip like the not knowing the fear, the anticipation of what's about to happen, and and being unsure of that. So that is exactly agreed. And then Disney utilizes it in a creative way, like right. It's like we're not going to tell you when this ride's going to open. We're not even going to tell you necessarily what's in it. We're going to give you concept art, and then when you go through it and they finally get to see it, it's spectacular. And yeah, we're going to love it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Th th there's going to be a lot in here that I think I think is going to really impress a lot of people. You know, um, you know, look, Splash Mountain was a very popular ride, you know, uh, for decades. But um, you know, I think I think change is good. I think I think I think that's what these parks were intended to do with change. I I, 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 I think after this, uh, this is going to sound so bad, but like after all the hysteria, people are going to be like, Splash what? Zippity who? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, it's possible, man. I mean, that's kind of what happened, honestly, with Tower of Terror. I remember, I remember, like, the hysteria. When they announced that, Mission yeah. Breakout, what's going to, what are you talking about? It's going to be a Guardians of the Galaxy attraction. This, that's crazy talk. What are you going to, what, 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 what do you mean? 
And then they did it and it opened and we we're like, okay, we haven't looked back since, you know what I'm saying? That's the perfect example of what I mentioned earlier about something like your blonde hair and white glasses, right? Right. That, and I knew there was something that couldn't come to me. That is exactly <laughs> it. And I absolutely, I love both of those attractions. I love them both very, very, very much. But if you ask me, what do I want to keep? Which one, if I had to pick one, I'm picking Guardians of the Galaxy. And the first, I'm not even, I know that might be in the minority, but there is that is so fun because of the music. They blast that music yes. when Rocket plugs that in is one of the coolest moments ever. Yeah, yeah. it's it's just because you don't know which song you're gonna get, and then when it's you do, so it's like the, it it builds up that hype. And I tell you, the of how they even updated the ride system, it's more intense. It's yeah. more, and it's like, and and in my head, I'm like scratching my head at it. And I'm thinking, how in the world are they turning? this building the tower of terror into something of guardians of the galaxy i don't see how it works and they turn it into the collector's fortress it's and brilliant. everything and they take you on a tour and then you have to help the guardians escape and i'm like i was there opening day i was literally they had to take oh, us man. all through the backstage area just to get fast passes and then i ended up knocking a few people to uh, you know how to get out of my way because i you know, there was this elderly woman that actually had four extra fast passes and she literally just did like random anybody want them and i i sprint <laughs> so oh, it was I, like i thought i thought you were gonna say you knocked the elderly woman out of the way i like george george <laughs> not that's okay awesome. bro not okay <laughs> so i ended up i ended up riding it five times that day oh, oh man. so i'm so envious that's so it's so good i love it so much it's so it's so short but so worth it i absolutely think it's brilliant and the queue is amazing the whole thing the whole setup to your point like to take something so well known and so beloved and completely <laughs> retheme it and for it to work because uh, i absolutely love it yeah. Can, yeah. And and Ron, can I ask you something? And sorry, OG, if I could just add yeah, a little yeah. sub little topic to this. I want to ask you because we were talking about speaking of Mission Breakout and we were talking about Avatar and like where it's going to go and everything. But I wanted to get your thoughts with the news of the the uh, the Legends uh, ceremony with uh, Imagineer Joe Rohde being honored and James Cameron, which both of them have worked and collabed together on Pandora at Animal Kingdom. Not saying it was a coincidence that they were being honored because they both deserve to be honored as as Disney legends for their contributions to the company and what have you. But I mean, here at OG55, we always say a coincidence is never a coincidence. They <laughs> right. actually have these two gentlemen in the same place at the same time. And again, their their worth eth eth ethnics together is was just like a, a marriage match. In, in heaven so well, and, the, you... and the rumors of like animal kingdom expanding and then pa pandora or avatar coming to disneyland and now this is the year you decide that you're gonna have both of those men on the stage for yeah. for the legends award go ahead george and and then and then also kind of joe Rody <sighs> hinting that he's teaching <sighs> these master classes at imagineering and what have you so all that put together what what's what's your take on it do you think that something is more there than just teaching a master class and accepting an award or do you think do you think there's more behind it well i think it's making amends because disney did joe dirty so <laughs> so there what better opportunity then well, again avatar right so avatar and we talked about franchises so avatar has for the next a decade plus scheduled films being released well maybe not a decade at this point but they have for eight years every two years they have a new avatar support you know, and knowing james cameron it'll be 20 years but the point is <laughs> the point is that is a huge deal the big success that happened in um that's been going on in florida with avatar land and knowing that it's coming here and it went from an experience to a land that's coming here so all of this avatar world and that's going to be going on for decades literally it's not going away once they get the land going it's obviously going to be there for many 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 years um so what better time so if we're gonna uh, we're gonna bring in james cameron it's like okay we're gonna bring in joe Rody, who is a who's a part of that because we also need him because we're doing disneyland if, if not other places so it was like the perfect storm i guess to make amends and, and apologize with without maybe apologizing it just kind of it all fits and i agree there are no coincidences ever it's all strategic and 
and who and in, in a situation like this, who cares if it's a strategic? Because I feel like it's definitely the we we were bad, we were wrong, we're, we are sorry, <laughs> but we're gonna we're gonna crown you. We're gonna we're gonna show you love. We're gonna present you with love, and then hopefully it all works out from there. I don't know. Yeah. That's how it feels. It's it's like well it's like said. handing him his award and then like congratulations, you're deserving. By the way, we have this little Pandora project, <laughs> <laughs> and you're exactly. gonna be in, in charge. You're the lead. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. A, cra a crazy time to be a Disney fan. So much going on with the parks. The corporate side, it's a ton of stuff. Ron, it was an absolute honor having you on, brother. Thank you so much. You guys are gentlemen and scholars, and I appreciate you asking me. And um, it was it was my honor. Thank you. Awesome. You definitely have to come back on. We have yeah. so much more to talk about. And hey, I'm a I'm a film guy. You want to talk film? I could I could go all day with that. <laughs> <laughs> We yeah. might be brothers. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron, this guy was so funny, dude. We we did a show. We have a we have a show here on the channel called Story Geeks with with a friend of ours, Jay Shear. You know, and um, we were talking. I don't even remember. I don't even remember the video. But this guy comes out with <laughs> he he names the first and last name of the editor for Jaws. I was like, George, how do you know this? Like, how do you know the editor for Jaws? I mean, this guy is in it. He's absolutely yeah, in that's it. Awesome. So yeah. No, that's if, awesome. if you, Great time to have you on talk talk studio talk film you know absolutely. Well, my pre my previous life, well, I spent geez, more than a decade on film sets, so that's why I talk about it. I spent, I, as my career is the the Disney operations, although it's not for Disney, but it's it's you know marketing manager for another billion dollar company. So it's like my 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 things I love and the things I get paid to do are in these wheelhouses. I'm just channeling it in a recreational way towards Disney and film and talking to quality human beings like yourselves. Well, thank you, Ron. We appreciate you, sir. Nice. Thank you. Uh, so, Like we said, you're always welcome back. We'd love to talk shop with you, whether it be parks, film, whatever it is. We'd love to have you back. But if you can remind everybody at home to where they can find you on social media, sir. Um, X, Twitter. I refuse to call it X. Twitter <laughs> is uh, at fake Ron Verner. Ron with two N's. Ron Verner. Fake, at fake Ron Verner. And uh, I don't remember my Instagram. I think it's Ronnie Burner, but <laughs> I, I post nothing but puppies anyway. So nobody. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll link both down below in the, in the description. So make sure you follow uh, Ron on both platforms. Absolutely. And especially if, you're a, especially if you're a puppy lover, you know, go, go oh, check them out. Puppies. <laughs> oh, and we are, we're big, we're big dog yeah. fans here on the channel. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, George, if you let everybody home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And, of course, you can find me here on my home base at Orange Grove, 55 with Citrus Corner, with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. And, yes, I, too, only call it Twitter. But for some reason, I have to add that X part in the beginning because it just rolls off so nicely with my spiel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, you de your spiel definitely has needs Xs attached to it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Well said, Ron. Well said. Thank you all so, so much for watching this episode of OG55. Comment, all, da comment down below with all your thoughts on everything we talked about today. Disneyland Forward, uh, Magic Keys, Tiana Bayou Adventure. We would love to hear from you. Comment down below. And as always, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>